built in. It's in the DNA. And if the sins of the father are, are passed on to the children and on to the children and on to the children ad infinitum, well, in the flesh, when we're born in the natural, those sins are passed on to us. And the consequence of that sin is passed on to us. Yes. All right? So, but those behaviors, the, the ones I just mentioned, immorality, impurity, sensuality, that's what the world is accustomed to. Mm -hmm. And like it or not, that's what the world understands and expects. And in many, if not most cases, these deeds of the flesh are what the world enjoys and supports. It's common. Well, but, but they, you got to understand something. You know, if, if you're saved, if you're redeemed, and you look at these and you think, well, these are horrible. Well, the world looks at these and doesn't say they're horrible. They don't say that Im immorality, impurity, and sensuality are horrible. If they were, you wouldn't see half the things you see on television, in the movies, or that you hear on the radio. Because they're, 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 they're filth. Yes. Well, why are, they, why are they on the radio? Why are they on the television? Why are they in the movies? Because the world loves them. So, you know, don't think that these things, as abhorrent as they are to God, and they should be to us, don't think that they are abhorrent to the world. The world loves this stuff. Factions, dissensions. You look at reality television, and there's always conflict. That's because the world loves conflict. It loves those factions. It loves those dissensions. It, it loves those disputes. You hardly ever see a reality show that's not filled with it. Well, that's what feeds the flesh, doesn't it? Well, it, it does. The, the flesh loves the deeds of the flesh. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think somehow Christians, you know, we get to the place where we think, oh, these are horrible, and yes, everybody thinks they're horrible. No, not everybody thinks they're horrible at all. And even whether, whether it's real or fake. I mean, when I was a little kid, I, and television's had screens that, that big. And people would literally put magnifying glasses in front of the television. That's what it, you wouldn't remember this, my, my brother. But I can remember going to my grandmother's house and she'd be watching the wrestling. And there was uh, Hat Pin Hattie, yes, and uh, Gorgeous George. And wrestling today is still a gigantic thing. I, everybody knows, I pray everybody knows, they that don't. it's phony. Yeah. No, they don't. Okay, well even if they don't, what it's about and what they love about it is the disputes, yeah. the conflict, the violence, the deeds of the flesh. Yeah. But you know, even we ourselves, when when you get angry, if you give in to that anger, it real it feels good. Your flesh loves it. It feeds the flesh. Yes, it feeds the okay, flesh. Okay, but that's, that's my point. So, you know, when we talk about these deeds of the flesh, and Paul mentions them in Galatians. These are like, okay, here are the horrible things. Well, the world doesn't think that they're horrible. And you have to realize that. And your, here's the thing, more importantly than understanding that the world, your flesh doesn't hate these things. No, your flesh loves it. Your flesh things. likes this stuff. Yeah, it feeds on it. Yes. Okay? If you walk in the flesh. So, they don't, the world, they don't understand. And surely they don't know, and they don't care, that God spoke through the prophet Isaiah a long time ago and said, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, yes. who substitute darkness for light and light for darkness, who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter, mm -hmm. turning, thing, th turning things upside down. We live in a world where everything's turned upside down. The bad is called good and the good is called bad. And the evidence of that is out all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's getting worse every right. day. But that is the generational curse that flows through and to the offspring of Adam for all time. And there's only one way to break that generational curse. Mm -hmm. Change fathers. That's right. And that's why when Nicodemus the Pharisee came in the night to Jesus, Jesus answered and said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3.3 3. You've got to be born again. You've got, and when you're born again, now Nicodemus didn't understand that, and Jesus went on to explain. He went on to say to him, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. John 3.6 So the redeemed, and that's what we're talking about, the evidence of a redeemed life, the redeemed then have 
a new father who is spirit. That's what Jesus said in John 4, right? John 4, 24. Mm -hmm. And they have new life. That breaks that generational curse. So if we have new life in Jesus, that demands a new lifestyle. And that's why it's written, and this is Paul writing to the Ephesians, and he says that in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lusts of deceit. Ephesians 4.22. So, you know, you've got to put aside that old life. Paul also wrote in Romans and said, you know, we are not to be conformed to the world. We are not to be like the world but we have to be transformed by the renewing of our minds.